Hi, welcome to the Roman Guys Neighborhood Series. Rome is split up into many different districts. Today, I'm in a neighborhood we refer to in modern day Rome called Campo dei Fiori. I love this area because of the diverse array of bars, museums, restaurants, and shops. Imagine yourself in a crowded bar square one second, then all of a sudden you make a right-hand turn and you're in a practically empty piazza admiring the neoclassical architecture. That has to be the reason why so many noble Italian families still take residence in this area. To be completely accurate, Campo dei Fiori is a piazza. But since it is the epicenter of so much life throughout the day and night, locals unofficially refer to the general area or neighborhood as Campo or Campo dei Fiori. If you watched our other neighborhood videos, you know that Rome is split up into 22 districts called Rioni. The neighborhood we refer to as Campo dei Fiori is between two districts called Rioni Regula and Rioni Parioni. Campo di Fiori means literally field of the flowers. It's been a market in Rome for quite some time. Today they sell all kinds of fruits and produce. It's surrounded by many different side streets, bars, restaurants, and lots of things to do. Let me show you around. You can see the Vatican City on the top left of this map. The Spanish steps are located in the top center and the Colosseum and Roman Forum on the bottom right. Campo di Fiori is central to all three, reachable in about 10 to 15 minutes from each location by bus. You can find details on which buses to take in our blog linked in the description below. That's right, right down there below the video. Campo di Fiori is known for its market in the daytime and bar scene at night. The market closes in the early afternoon and the surrounding bars and restaurants will extend their seating out into the piazza. If you arrive before 7 p.m., you'll see many bars displaying aperitivo, which is a free buffet of snacks to tide you over while you enjoy your drink. Campo di Fiori has two different crowds frequenting its bars. In the early evening, it's more of a mature crowd enjoying the scenery and local culture. As the night goes on, it's populated with young, local, and international students looking to party. The daytime market has only been there since 1869. It was previously in Piazza Navona before they moved it. But the area has always been known for its commercial routes. The surrounding roads are even named after the trades performed on those particular roads. Via dei Balestrari is known for crossbow makers. Ugh. Via dei Baulari is known for coffer makers. Via dei Cappellari is known for hat makers. Delish. Via dei Chiavari is known for key makers. Prior to becoming a market, Campo was known for its executions. That's right. Most famously for that of Giordano Bruno on February 17, 1600. He elaborated upon the Copernican theory, saying that the stars were actually distant suns with exoplanets of their own. He even mentioned these stars may be able to foster life of their own. His theory concluded that the universe was infinite and could have no celestial body at its center, directly conflicting with the church's teachings, punishable by death. Today the main piazza has more of a light-hearted appeal. The market has a wonderful array of fruits, vegetables, oils, liqueurs, sandwiches, and more. The high volume of visitors to this piazza has brought out the entertainer and every merchant. Stand owners offer free samples and often have funny stories and anecdotes. On top of the stands in the center, there are many authentic shops in the area. L'Antica Norceria Viola is a 126-year-old family-owned and operated shop that sells cured meats. We had a chance to speak to the owner, Benedetto, who is there working daily. Siamo qui dal 1890, fondò il negozio il mio bisnonno e ad oggi siamo alla quarta generazione. Abbiamo i vari prosciutti crudi, i vari prosciutti cotti, affumicati. Abbiamo una vasta selezione di Bustel, i migliori del mondo naturalmente, noi prendiamo a Dobbiago, al confine con l'Austria. 
poi abbiamo appunto come vi dicevo i 35 tipi di salami tra cui i salami al tartufo più particolari al vino barolo salami di cinghiale di fegato con scorza d'arancio o altrimenti abbiamo dei classici dei eh, tipo il cacciatorino un impasto a grana fina aglio e pepe abbiamo dei salami classici o naturali come il bastoncino dolce un salame senza pepe senza aglio senza glutine e senza lattosio altamente digeribili poi abbiamo le coppiette e eh, sarebbe il pork jerky sarebbe il prosciutto essiccato sgrassato e condito con peperoncino e pinocchio a presto veniteci a trovare no, <ride> Although not operated by its original owners, Il Forno Campo dei Fiori has been supplying bread products to the area since at least 1819. Today they have two shops right next to each other, one that bakes bread and sweets and the other that makes sandwiches. The sandwich shop is extremely popular amongst locals for lunch, and we happen to be filming there at lunchtime, so I couldn't resist the urge to stop in for a panino. <laughs> È veramente buono. Adjacent to the busy Piazza Campo dei Fiori is Piazza Farnese. It has a much more tranquil feel, which is strange since it's just a few steps away from Campo. Here you can relax and have a coffee or a plate of pasta at one of the restaurants. The focal point of the square is Palazzo Farnese. It was once the home of the Farnese dynasty, but today is the French embassy. Like many Roman palazzi, this is a functioning museum. Instructions on how to book are located in our blog linked below in the description. The piazza is also home to two large fountains that were once bathtubs in the ancient Roman bath, the Baths of Caracalla. Nearby on Via di Manserato is Café Peru. This quaint cafe is frequented by locals and visitors alike. It has a bar where you can get coffee, sandwiches, and drinks on the side. You can also order sit-down food and relax in their artistic seating area that opens up to the street. They change their menu daily and offer dishes with seasonal ingredients. Perfect for a casual lunch. Most Romans would agree that Via Giulia is amongst the most prestigious street addresses in the city. It's truly an accomplishment to live on this beautiful road. Via Giulia was created in Rome over 500 years ago by Pope Julius II. It was the first example of modern urbanization in the city since antiquity. That's right, since the ancient Romans, a sign that Italy was emerging from the Dark Ages. Via Giulia is a direct route to the Vatican from the city center, and for that reason it was home to many famous popes, cardinals, artists, and people of esteem, like Raphael. The road is framed by the beautiful arch, which is a bridge leading from the former Farnese residence to their patron church. During the Renaissance and related time periods, it was normal to go to church daily. Death was much more common in these days, and the idea was to be as close to the church as possible in case your number was called. My final recommendation is a great place to eat near Campo called Der Palaro. This is something out of a movie. The place is run by a husband and wife who may be a hundred years old each. The wife is the chef and she loves the spotlight. I could almost guarantee she'll stop by your table to see how you're doing. Trust the waiters, but don't over order. Like many traditional Roman restaurants, they can't stomach wasted food and will ask you to finish your food before moving on to the next course or handing over the check. I'm not even kidding. I hope our video was helpful in planning your next trip to Rome. We have plenty of other neighborhood videos worth the watch. If you like this one, please let us know by clicking the thumbs up button. If you love this one, then share it with friends. If you want to see more videos, you should subscribe to our channel. All these things motivate us to make more helpful videos. Speaking of which, if you have a good idea for our next video, leave it in the comment below. Thanks again for listening from The Roman Guy.